Wow. How is it going, boys and girls? Welcome back to Key West Waterman. My name is Aaron Young. I don't need to explain to you what's going on. Just take this in for a second. It's just one of those days. It's one of those days I have off from work. Um, I guess this is kind of my work now. Kind of hard to believe, but I'm working. Um, it's just, it's an absolutely perfect day if there is such a thing. It's low 80s, no wind, sunny, very little clouds. The water is crystal clear. Um, unfortunately, Madeline was busy, so she could not come today. Uh, she's doing some realtor stuff. But I wanted to get out and, I'm gonna talk a lot, sorry. I wanted to get out and find some new spots. Uh, people, I actually get two or three emails a week of people asking me for spots. I wish I could share spots, but if I share all my spots, I won't have any good spots. So how do I find new spots? You gotta put the time in. I love it. I think it's extremely rewarding to go out and explore and find something new. It's exciting. You add more spots uh, to your arsenal. That way you're not hitting the same spots over and over again. So um, I'm gonna sacrifice today. Essentially, I'm gonna go in my GPS in the areas where I don't have a lot of numbers and I'm gonna search that area. So that's what we're gonna do. I kind of have lobster on the brain and I was gonna uh, go to those empty spots where I don't have numbers and just hop in and drift. But with it being like this, I think I'm gonna honestly be able to drive around and find lobsters, but we'll see. So um, I'm out here, we've got the dive gear, weather is perfect, I've got the cameras. So uh, let's see what we can find. All right, so I am in an area that I don't have mapped out very well. Just, there's a lot of real estate out here. I do spend a lot of time out here, but at the same time, whoop, at the same time, I don't have everything marked. So I'm just driving. Ooh, I don't know if you can see it. There's a bunch of antennas in there. I swear that was an accident. Hold on, let me back up. And that, it's hard to see right there, is a nice ledge. There's actually a bunch of lobster antennas sticking out of it. So I'm gonna hit mark. And that's how I find new spots. Well, at least when it's clear. A lot of times it's, um, I'm having a drift for these, but today it's so clear and calm out, I can literally just drive around and mark them, which is pretty insane. Not a ledge, but a little head. You can actually see there's a, just a baby one, just a baby lobster hanging out, but in my book, that is worth marking. So we are going to mark it. And I didn't used to do this, but now I do this now just because I learned my lesson. You gotta put notes on your numbers. For years and years and years, I just hit mark and I never put notes on them. You gotta have notes on them. So like that one, I'll just put small coral, um, could hold a few lobsters. So it's just a little tip. Take it from me, I learned the hard way. Holy moly. Look at this one. I know you can see that ledge. There's a bunch of them right here. I don't see any lobsters on it. It may be a little too hot. I don't know. Quite a bit to search there. That is really cool though. A lot of fish. You can see a lot of big overhang. I'm only in probably four or five, eh, maybe four feet of water. I'll tell you right now. Three and a half feet. Pretty cool. Some decent ledges right there. A couple right there, those are worth marking. There's a decent one right there. See, nice big overhang. Definitely gonna mark that one. So the wind is picking up just a smidge, enough to make the surface a little ripply. Uh, a little harder to see and I'm finding a ton of spots I've marked I don't know how many I'm gonna show you but I shorten everything up but I've marked probably 25 or 30 new numbers that look like good lobster spots but I'm just not seeing a lot of lobster in them so while I'm out here I do want to bring some home to eat so I'm gonna go 
uh, out a little deeper because the water's been so clear and I'm gonna set up and show you how I drift and um, hopefully we can find some lobsters to catch. So I'd like to be clear, I know it sounds a little hypocritical, but I don't condone free diving alone, like deep free diving, long breath holds. Um, it is very dangerous. A lot of you guys will, that's, that's fine. A lot, of you, a lot of you will consider this free diving alone. I am in 15 feet of water. I'm going like this. I consider this snorkeling. Um, I recommend, especially for beginners, if you uh, are gonna get out to be with a buddy, not that I am above accidents or better than anybody, but um, I've been in the water for the better part of my life. I'm very uh, meticulous when it comes to being safe and thinking of every scenario. Uh, but anyways, enough, enough preaching. Long story short, if you're gonna dive alone, just be safe. Please, please be safe. Um, so I'm going to show you a little system I use uh, for drifting. I'm going to clip this off to the boat. I've got a buoy. And I'm going to clip this just above where the anchor is hanging. So I'm going to hang on to the anchor. If I see anything I like, I just unclip this, drop the anchor to the bottom. And we're on that spot and we're going to mark it. So um, Just taking a lobster uh, snare with me. If we see some fish, maybe I'll shoot something. But I've got lobster on the brain, so that's what we're going to do. float. I'll see you in the water. back underwater everybody as always appreciate you tuning in let's talk about a couple of these dives so at this point I had been drifting probably 20 25 minutes and this was the first ledge worth stopping on that I saw um, so what I do is see that ledge swim over to my buoy and unclip that anchor and park the boat on that spot that way I can mark that spot one side note I did want to mention before I forget, if by chance you were um, interested in buying a Grover or a banana gun and you wanted to get your hands on one first before you did make that purchase, um, if you're in the South Florida area or you're attending the Fort Lauderdale Boat Show, there will actually be some at the Koa Spearfishing booth. Um, I believe it's booths 33 through 35 in the Blue Wild section. Unfortunately, I will not be there this year. I'm hoping next year with some um, time freed up from not running charters, I'll be able to make some of the expos. But just wanted to mention, if you wanted to get one in your hands before you bought them, Koa Spear Fishing Booth, uh, booths 33 through 35 in the Blue Wild section. Uh, they will be over there, so you can go check them out. So we've got the boat anchored up um, pretty close to the spot. That way I can mark it in my GPS and I'm getting to searching. Little spider crab. Spider crabs all over on these ledges. Sometimes I take them, sometimes I don't. Just depends on what I'm looking for. There's a little red grouper there. I only see one lobster as of right now. I thought I saw another antenna in that corner, but um, this time of year the lobster thin out quite a bit. The commercial boats and the recreational boats have been hitting them for so long they get a lot harder to find. So you'll find a spot like this spot during mini season or early in the season would be absolutely stacked. But this late in the season, 
uh, you won't see as many. It's not necessarily, it doesn't mean it's a bad spot, it's just the lobster are thinned out. So I still save these because I know beginning of the year that uh, this is going to be a good number. So I saw, I went back down and I saw that other lobster. I saw an antenna sticking out and just confirmed there was one in there, a nice one. So I'm working on this one. You get to a point where you can pretty close judge them. Um, this one looks pretty darn close in my opinion. I like that snare opposed to the net and tickle sticks. Just one less thing for me to carry. And when I'm handling these, I do my very best, especially if I know they're not big enough, just try not to break any of the legs off, any of the antenna. Try not to break any of that off and damage the lobster if I can help it. I know sometimes it happens. So. Measured this guy and it was just barely, barely too short. And if you look at my gauge there, a lot of people will have asked me why it has two sides. One, uh, this gauge, one side's actually for stone crab claws and one's for lobster. Has a little L and a little C. I try to try to put them back where I find them if I can. This was that second one tucked up in the corner. I almost didn't see this. It had that little weed in front of it. Uh, this one was a much bigger one. I could definitely tell this one was a keeper. And it was weird, uh, the lobsters do vary quite a bit in color. This one had that like dark, almost kind of purple look. Um, the camera saturates it a little bit when you come to the surface, but uh, in person it actually did look kind of purple, it was wild. Whoa. Almost like purple. And I actually almost left, uh, pulled the anchor and left, and I swam over just a little bit and I started to see more ledges. So that one, the first one I found was actually kind of what I would consider the main ledge, the biggest. Uh, but there were quite a few more little smaller pocket ledges and uh, uh, ended up being a pretty big area and there were quite a few lobster on it. So I, I was really excited about this one because I know, like I said earlier in the season, I, this is a kind, the kind of spot you would catch a limit on. There was. So many little cracks and hiding spots. And these were all so close. Like I said, I can eyeball them pretty close, but they were all so close, I just wanted to double check. Accidentally dropped my snare there. five or six that were just, just barely, barely short.
once I'm done searching, grab that buoy and I clip back off and away I go, continue my drift. This was a actually a pretty nice red grouper, just a little pocket shelf. Decided to leave them be. They love those little holes. My first drift was maybe half a mile. I'm not going very fast, but um, I did find one really nice area. It was one main ledge and then there was a bunch of like little kind of pocket ledges all around it. And pulled two keepers off it. There was a bunch of uh, short lobsters. So just that area alone was worth finding. I've never, never dove that spot before. So that was pretty cool. Saw a nice red grouper. Um, so that was just our first drift. I'm gonna try another one. Maybe, maybe we get one or two more in. Be nice to have. I'm pretty thrilled with two lobster, but if I could if I could take three or four home, it'd be nice. We get a couple meals out of it. But uh, I'm gonna run a little farther down and set up another one. See what we see. This was pretty neat. There was um, dozens and dozens of, uh, they look like little bonnet heads. I'm not a shark expert by any means, but to me they look like little bonnet heads. They, if you're watching on a big screen, you'll, you'll see them a little better, but um, there's just tons of them. On this drift, I saw hundreds of them. You can see they all kind of take off when I drop down, but um, I couldn't really tell while they were there. They weren't feeding. There wasn't uh, really anything going on other than the fact that they were just swimming around. And I cut out a, a couple decent ledges that I found, uh, just short lobsters on them. This drift was probably about 45 minutes long. I went a little further on this one. It was about three quarters of a mile. Um, and right before I stopped on this, I was actually swimming around on the bottom and I had a school of mangrove snapper swim up to me. You can see there's an, uh, some more right there. And in my head, You'll see certain little fish like grunts and porgies and stuff kind of out in the open, but if I'm seeing a ball of mangroves, immediately I think that there's going to be a ledge nearby because uh, those type of fish like more of structure. So I did drop the anchor and I started to search a little bit and I actually followed the mangroves over and they led me to a really, really nice section. It was a little grouper as well. You may have saw that dart there in the sand. Um, that tells me I've got to be close to a ledge because those groupers have to have hiding spots. That's just how they are. Um, and wouldn't you believe it, I came up and found a really, really nice section of ledges. Actually went quite a ways. There wasn't a whole lot home, but um, this one was pristine as far as a, it goes for lobster habitat. So I continued to search and I was kind of surprised I hadn't seen more lobster here yet and uh, I did end up finding them all in a ball. And lobster are actually gregarious. Uh, they like to stay together. They like to be around each other. So I'm just kind of following that ledge down, sizing them all up, seeing if any of them uh, stand out. And one of them actually did. So i 
catch my breath and give it a go. And when I have uh, lobster charters for beginners, this is one of the harder things to do if you do find a, a big bunch of lobster is to single out one because if you disrupt the whole bunch of them, they're going to go crazy and it's going to get cloudy and you won't be able to work on them. So it's a tactic that we use. We try to single out either the ones that are farthest out on the side first. Uh, this one I knew there was only one keeper there or I had a feeling there was only one keeper so I can single this one out. But a lot of times the beginners, one of the mistakes I see them make is they go in there kind of guns blazing, lobster go crazy and it stirs up the, the ledge and you can't see anything. So we try to single them out one by one. You can see on that one I just walked that one out by itself, tried not to make a big mess and um, it worked out. Just wanted to double check and make sure there was no keepers left in there. And the camera can be a little deceiving when I'm watching this back. These actually look bigger um, than what they really were. Because that, that first one I caught was noticeably bigger in person than the rest of these. And this ledge went pretty far back. So I'm uh, sticking my snare back there just to, just to make a couple of them walk and move around so I can get a better look at them. But after further inspection, they were... Uh, they were all short. So that was pretty neat. Found some really awesome spots. Uh, this last one was probably my favorite of all of them. Saw probably two shooter red groupers throughout the day. I like to leave those alone, but um, good to see them. And uh, I think all in all, I found maybe 25, 30 new ledges, which I'm really excited about. Um, you may be wondering why I'm thinking some of these spots are awesome if I only caught three lobsters. Well, this late in the season, the commercial boats and the recreational boats have been after them for so long. Um, they get a lot harder to find, so there's not as many, but I know early in the season, these spots would be completely stacked, just the shape of them, the ledges, how deep they are, and um, really did find some good spots today. So I'm pretty thrilled with it. Uh, I've got three lobsters to eat. Uh, before it gets too late, I'm gonna get back and um, got some stuff to do this evening, but we'll come up with a recipe. Maybe we'll try something new. Um, we'll have some dinner and I'll see you in a bit. And we're in the kitchen. So I'm gonna try a recipe I've never done before. This was sent to me by um, a subscriber. I believe his name was Rick. Um, I've never tried this. It sounds interesting. I'm a little skeptical, I'll be honest, but I'm looking forward to trying it. Love trying new stuff. Um, he refers to it as candied orange zest crusted lobster, I think. So I'll show you what we need. Pretty simple. It was pretty straightforward from what he sent me. Got a little bit of butter. Got my split tail. I'm just gonna do one. Uh, just to try it out to see if I like it first. I've got the zest from, I think about two oranges, uh, pepper, salt, and I've made a simple syrup, uh, one cup of water, one cup of sugar. So brought that up to a boil, dissolved all the sugar, uh, and now we are going to add our orange zest. All right, orange zest is in there. Stir well. Maybe you want to break it all up. Might get a whisk. Assuming we want to break all the little individual pieces up. Alright, there we are. If you couldn't hear me, I'm assuming we want to break all the individual little pieces up. They said, or he said, stir well uh, and let it sit for a few minutes. So that's what we're going to do. Oven is coming up to 350. I'll see you in a sec. All right, so next, I let it sit for about four minutes. Next, it says to run your simple syrup through a strainer to catch all that 
zest. All right, next step. Spread this stuff out. He said to do it on parchment paper, but I don't have any. Whoop, perfect timing. I don't have any parchment paper, so we're gonna use aluminum foil. Hopefully that works, doesn't kill me. We're gonna spread this stuff out. Just I think we're gonna dry it in the oven is the concept here. Spread it out as thin as you can. That's good enough for me. So into the oven, set about 10 minutes, but I'll just watch it. Uh oh. Some of it is actually browning. Feels dry to me. Taste a little bit. Oh yeah, that's dry. All right, so I'm just gonna use a, oh, I was gonna say a wood spoon so I didn't tear the aluminum, but. This is why you use parchment paper, I'm assuming. Kind of screwed the pooch on that one, but take get what we can get out of it. Luckily, I made, I think, more than enough for one tail. So once I got to this point, he um, left it pretty loose. He said you can cube it and sprinkle it on there and saute it. You can saute it in butter, or you can leave it in the shell, sprinkle it on there, broil it. Um, I'm guessing just kind of whatever, just cook it, but with the orange zest on there. So what I'm actually going to do is something a little different. I'm going to sear the top of the tail, just this open side. I'm going to sear it in butter just for a short time, maybe about a minute. Then I'm gonna sprinkle that orange zest on and we'll throw it in the oven. All right, so that was about a minute. Whoops. I'm just gonna sprinkle this on there. I'll be honest, I was skeptical at first, but now that I'm smelling and tasting these little candied zests, I think I'm gonna be a believer. All right, so I'm gonna go into the oven. After searing that, I can't imagine this is gonna take more than, should be more than five minutes, but I'm just gonna watch it. And there we are, hopefully it's done. I did six minutes at 350 and then I broiled it for one minute. Let that cool off for just a sec. Hopefully I did it right, or at least kind of right. Tips, are you having a tough time? I'm gonna just pull this out with my hand. Do you have any reservations against that? Oh yeah, very. I have lots of manners. Wow, well, the presentation looks cool. I don't even know if I did it right. I will let you know shortly. I didn't have nearly as much on there as I'm supposed to. Oh, so okay. get some on there. Okay. Ooh, it's a little hot. It's a warm? A little puny warm. Honest, be honest. Because I'm going to be honest. Hmm. It's like it's such new flavors. I've never had orange on lobster, so I'm just like, it's good. But I don't feel like it's very candied. Maybe I didn't get enough of this. Maybe I don't have enough on there. Like I'm getting a good amount of orange flavor, but just not like. I'll be honest, I don't think I did it justice. Mmm. <laughs> you need to get more crunchies. Mm. More crunchies. Mm-hmm. That was a good bite. I'll be honest, I'm not sold on it. Get that bite right there. Oh, save some crunchies. Sorry, Rick. I don't think I did it right. <laughs> Who's that mean? Okay, yeah, that was better. Right, right. You get, you need more. How many crunchies did you put on there? Like, well, it's because I didn't have the parchment paper. 
I stuck to the aluminum, so I only got like half. Yeah, extra crunchies. So, I'm gonna be completely transparent. Mm. It's good. It's not my favorite thing I've ever had. Like I don't know. Well, if I, I don't know if I'd make it again. It needs. But it, it but needs to be. I, I could have done this wrong. Okay. It needs. <clears throat> the recipe he sent me was very loose. It was kind of like cooked with your instinct, which is what we do. Yeah. Maybe my instinct was just wrong. <laughs> um. The flavor is really good um, if you get a lot of the crunchies on it. So I think yeah. you need more crunchies and it needs to be in like a fresh, like green salad with like, like I feel like that would really do it justice with some like goat cheese and berries and sunflower okay. seeds. Like, wow, you just come up with that? Yeah, I'm just like a chef. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, that, that would do this justice. Okay. It, I mean, if you think about orange yeah, lobster I, I, taste. I, I genuinely, I know I'm repeating myself. I, I genuinely think I didn't put it up on there. Because it is a good flavor. I'm just, mm -hmm. I'm not like, I didn't see the light, you know? <laughs> but but you, it is good. You don't have to see the light on fun. every dish, though. No, that's fine. It's like, uh, Anyways, that's all we got. I'm going to try that again because I, I don't think I, I don't think I got enough You just on there. need more crunchies. We're going to give it redemption. More crunchies next time. <laughs> Um, that is all we have. Do you hmm. have anything you want to share with the world? Just more crunchies. More crunchies. Okay. <laughs> I'll see you on the next one. Oh, you're asking like more of like a inspirational quote? Yeah. Oh. No. Do your best. Do your best. <laughs> Do your best, guys. Mm. Oh, we were supposed to save some for Justin. <laughs> Oops. Sorry, Justin.